all sorts of ways of doing this problem, but all of them involve some pretty crafty algebra. So a neutron in a nuclear reactor makes an elastic head-on collision with the nucleus of a carbon atom initially at rest. Letter A. What fraction of the neutron's kinetic energy is transferred to the carbon nucleus? The mass of the carbon nucleus is about 12 times the mass of the neutron. All right. So I've bothered to write down what we're actually looking for here. It's the ratio of final kinetic energy of the carbon atom and the initial kinetic energy of the neutron. If this is a whole, then this part of it over the whole gives us the fraction of the total that we are looking for. So specifically, we are looking for one half um, capital M, capital V squared final. That's just the way I've decided to describe these variables here. Take a look at these. I'm calling capital letters carbon and little letters neutron. And so it's going to be that over one half little m little v squared initial. And what I'm going to notice is that the one halves cancel out and the capital M over m the carbon mass over the neutron mass is just 12. So I'm looking for 12 V final squared, capital V final, over lowercase v, try and make it as clear as possible, initial squared. This is where I need to get. Game plan is set. Let's see what we can get. Okay, so now what? Well, it's a collision problem, so we might as well start with our conservation of momentum. So we have an expression here. The little m, little v, initial, plus zero because the initial momentum of the carbon atom is zero, is going to be equal to little m, little v, final, plus capital M, capital V, final. One thing we can do here is we can say, okay, mv initial minus mv final for the neutron equals mv final. And then what we can do is divide both sides by lowercase m. So v initial minus, whoops, minus v final is going to be equal to capital M over M, capital V final, which as before is just 12 V final. And that's all I can accomplish here with the conservation of momentum. Seems I have one equation and three unknowns, which isn't too helpful, but because we do have a elastic collision, we can talk about energy too. So here's our conservation of energy breakdown. We have one half, lowercase m, v squared, initial. Again, same thing, plus zero. It's going to be equal to one half, lowercase m, v squared, final, plus a half, capital M, v squared, final. Ones go away. I don't know if you can see this, but what I'm going to basically do is the same thing I did over here, only this time it's going to get me V initial squared minus V final squared is equal to 12 V final squared. And this is where it gets interesting. So what I'm going to do is divide I'm going to divide this equation by this expression here. So I'm going to do that divided by vi minus vf. Of course, what I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other. But this expression is equal to 12 capital VF. Gets better. So what we've got here on this side is the difference of two squares. 
So that means this is v initial minus v final, lowercase of course, times v initial plus v final. So all of this is going to be divided by vi minus vf. Maybe you can see why the difference of two squares was important. Now that's going to cancel out. And this thing is equal to simply vf. 12 are gone and one of the vfs are gone. All right, so now that means, let me scroll down a little bit. We've got two equations, two expressions that are both true. All right, so the first is going to be this one. vi minus vf equals 12 vf. Oh, I'm doing it again. I really should make sure I make it clear that these are lowercase. So lowercase vi minus lowercase vf. And I've also got this expression here, this new one that I kind of synthesized, and that's going to be vi plus vf equals just vf. And amazingly, these are in a good position for me to just add together. Because when I do that, these are going to drop away. 2 lowercase vi is equal to 13 vf. All right, so let me see here. That means that means that I can say yeah, I can say vi lowercase is equal to 13 over 2 vf capital And this expression here is going to help me solve this expression here. Let's see how. So what we're going to do is we're going to say 12 vf squared divided by vi squared. Well, only instead of vi, I'm going to write 13 over 2 capital vf squared, which, long story short, is going to leave me with 12, 2 over 13 squared, and actually that's it. The capital VFs are going to go away. So this ratio that I set out to solve is going to be equal to 0 0.284. That is the answer. Now go and profit from it. Right, and there's a part B because of course there is. So the initial kinetic energy of the neutron is 1.101 times 10 to the 13 joules. Okay, so Ke neutron is going to be equal to 1.101 exponent negative 13 and we're going to we're interested in finding the final kinetic energy uh, finding its final kinetic energy and the kinetic energy of the carbon nucleus after the collision okay well let me start with this carbon nucleus thing because we know from what I wrote down before that the kinetic energy um, the kinetic energy final of the carbon divided by the kinetic energy initial of the nucleus, we solved that thing to be 0 0.284, right? Okay, so yeah, that's right, that works, Ke initial. So I'm just going to put this right into there, 
and I'm going to solve this equation then for KEF of the carbon and that's going to be equal to 3.12 exponent negative 14 joules. Okay, no big deal. That one's done. And then we just need to find the final kinetic energy of the neutron. Right, so we know that that Ke final of the neutron should just be the 1.101 exponent negative 13 and from that we'll subtract the 3.12 exponent negative 14 joules and we'll get from that 7.88 exponent negative 14 joules equals KEF neutron and done.